trophy for four and a half years when they went into the 1970 League Cup final against a Celtic side who'd won that particular cup in 1965, 66, 67, 68 and 69 and were going for six in a row. But Willie Waddle and Jock Wallace took a gamble by playing a lad who would become the youngest player to score in a major British Cup final, still 11 days short of his 17th birthday. It was to prove the birth of a Rangers striking legend, Derek Johnston. Everyone seems to think that was my first game for Rangers. It wasn't. I'd, I'd played two or three weeks previous against Cowden Beath in the old first division. I think we won 5 nothing that day and I scored two goals. And for the next couple of games I was on the bench or I was in the reserves. And then when the big day came along, it was just such a surprise. You know, in these days, they didn't travel down the coast uh, to prepare for games on a Thursday. That You came in on Friday as normal. Uh, and that's when they came in after training. And I always remember Jock Wallace and Willie Waddle took me into the boot room. They closed the door, locked it, said, sit down. Uh, I looked at him, I thought I'd done something wrong. I mean, I didn't have a drink the night before or anything. I said, it can't be that. So they sat me down and said, there's half a dozen tickets for tomorrow's game. You're playing. I want you to go home and get a good night's sleep. Now, I say to you, I'm a 16-year-old boy. Go home and get a good night's sleep. You're playing in a cup final the next day. I mean, I never slept the whole night. You're obviously dreaming about scoring the winner. And uh, fortunately for me on that day, that's exactly how it turned out. I remember the goal very, very well indeed. Willie Johnson going over from the, the left to the right, and he crossed the ball in. And of course, I've jumped with my eyes shut, as I normally did, in between uh, Jim Craig and Billy McNeil. And fortunately for me, the ball ended up in the net. The only other thing I can remember about that game was uh, that late on, maybe about five or ten minutes to go, Willie Johnson sitting on the ball, which he got a bit of stick for. I think Rangers hadn't won a trophy for three or four seasons, and obviously this was the big one for them. And the, basically, that's all I can remember about the game. That was the first time I had ever won a, an actual medal. I played in some cup finals, and unfortunately we got beat. Uh, but that was the first time I had won a medal, and uh, as I say, that was another... It seemed to be a lot of rainy days in my career, but that was uh, 106,000 at Hamden. Uh, very, very wet conditions, and Derek Johnson, uh, just a youngster, had joined the club and started to do really well and they had had a couple of kind of came on, uh, he got in introduced into the first team and done well and Willie Waddle took a wee bit of gamble and it was a gamble but it was a gamble that paid off and uh, Big Derek scored a magnificent goal and as I say that really started my generation of the Rangers teams uh, that, that was starting to formulate the, all the good players in there and we went, went forward with that team and really we had a lot of success in, uh, all through the 70s with it. Mm. Turned up towards the halfway line. Johnston through to Jardin. Jardin working his windfield, trying a left foot shot, and it's a good one, and it's there! A sensation! That's the view from behind the goal. Over it comes. Punched away one handed, and a chance for the goal! Referee gives it. Normally, the, the Cup the Winners' Cup is probably the easiest cup to, to win, and I think everybody recognises that. But the, the quality of the teams we played uh, that period were exceptional. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, Bayern Munich, I mean, they had uh, Beckenbauer, Muller, uh, Hunas. They had about seven of the, the team that really won the World Cup with Germany. And I can remember that, that game in, uh, in Bayern, in Munich. I think that's the biggest hiding I've ever gotten in my life uh, as a team. For the, the first, probably first hour, we were in, encamped in our, not in our half, in the 18-yard box. We never got out and they gave us a roasting. But we managed to contain them and just keep it down to one nothing. And uh, one of the reasons we did beat them was that uh, we did have a really good spirit in the team. But as I said, we were exceptionally fit. And they just shot their bolt. And eventually we got, uh, we started to get forward. And they had, they had gone, and then in the last minute, well, the last 15 minutes, we scored a goal. And we came back with a 1-1 result, and uh, then we beat them 2-0 at Ibrox. They were a smashing side, Bayern, at that time. They had five or six uh, German internationalists in the side, and uh, we drew with them over in Munich. I always remember that. And for me, the stars of Rangers at that period, uh, during uh, the, the, the cup-winning side, was, was Willie Johnson and Colin Steen away from home they were absolutely magnificent they ran their, their legs off over there we always seemed to do well away from home it was important then 
to try and get a goal away from them, even in the, in the 70s. Defensively, we were doing okay. We weren't giving much away, but these two lads were fantastic for me. And to get the draw over in Bayern Munich, I can always remember my job on that night was to mark Uli Honus. He was the man that supplied everything in midfield for them. Uh, he was the spielmacher. I did well remember that name, didn't I? And uh, I had to follow him. I remember Willie Waddle saying to me, look, whatever you do, I want you to stick by Uli Honus. Wherever he goes, if he goes off for a, a wee-wee at 20 minutes, go, you follow him into that toilet, make sure he stays there. I stayed with him the whole 90 minutes. You rarely got a kick at the ball. I came in and Willie Waddle shook my hand and said, you were the man of the match. I think I had two kicks of the ball, but I'd done my job. That was, that was tactics in these days. And uh, of course, when we came back to Ibrox, there were, were 60,000 people there. Of course, we got off to the great start with that uh, Sandy Jardine goal in the first minute with his left foot. I think that surprised most people, more people rather than him. Of course, Derek Parlane had come in as well and made it too. Now, that was a fabulous night. And uh, it was just a great feeling that uh, we were going into uh, a European final. Rangers teams before had played in finals, obviously Nuremberg again, where they were beaten. But I think the lads after I had the feeling, this is our year. The fans certainly believed it was to be their year and the exodus began by bus, by car and by plane to the Catalan city of Barcelona and a meeting with Moscow Dynamo. It's estimated as many as 30,000 made the trip, hoping it would prove third time lucky for Rangers in the European Cup Winners' Cup. No fewer than 30 aircraft left Glasgow Airport alone. Bank loans had been taken out and insurance policies cashed. The Ibrox Legions were convinced that their club would win a European trophy for the first time. What are you going to do over there? We're going to show our strength over there anyway. You? We're going to drink plenty anyway, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> John, a lot of people are taking the view that Wednesday night's match in Barcelona is really a make-or-break game for Rangers. Do you think it's as serious or as important as that? I wouldn't say it was make-or-break, Arthur. I would, say, I would say it's a very, very important game for us. Uh, any final uh, a European trophy is an important game for any club. People are also saying that Moscow Dynamo are a fairly young side that are relatively inexperienced at this level of football and that Rangers will probably start favourites to win. Do you think you would rather be the underdogs or would you like to be favourites going out? Well, uh, I'm not really worried about being favourites. Uh, most of them don't, don't bother me really. It's, I'm more worried about the way we can play. Mm -hmm. If we play the way we, we can play, I'm not worried about who's favourites or who's underdogs. John, which of your European Cup or Cup matches so far do you think Rangers have played the best football? Well, I think uh, the last game, last uh, round against Bayern was, must be one of their best. But we've had hard, hard games in all the rounds of this Cup. It's been a hard, hard season for us in this tournament and uh, I think we've done very well to get to the final. So you yourself have been fighting hard against this ankle injury. I know you've been getting treatment right up until the very last minute. Uh, how do you feel about playing with an ankle that might perhaps give you a wee bit of trouble? Well, I've, I've had a few of these but, uh, after the years I've played now. But uh, my biggest problem has been that the season actually finished a couple of weeks back and there's not been any games apart from the two friendly games we've played. And uh, the grounds were a bit hard and I only played in half an hour in both of them. Uh, but they served their purpose, and I'm looking forward to it again Wednesday. I hope they'll be fully fit. Let me ask you this finally, John. How do you and the players feel about it? How, how, how confident are you of bringing the European Cup winners Cup back to Scotland for the first time? Well, we're very confident. We can I hope we can do it for not only the Rangers fans, but for Scotland. Uh, it's our third time in this final. I hope it's a good omen for us. The biggest problem for us, uh, or for Jock Wallace and Willie Waddle, was what the team was going to be. With two players injured at the time, obviously the skipper, Greggy, had an ankle injury. I mean, he hadn't trained for a couple of weeks. Uh, he had to be obviously very, very doubtful, but he was a leader on the park. And I think it was important for him to play in the game, whether he was fit or not. And the other one was Colin Jackson, uh, who was a great marker in the side. Couldn't, couldn't pass the ball, it has to be said, be bomber, but uh, you ask him to go and mark somebody, and he did a good job. He was the other one that was struggling. And I can remember the, the day of the game, uh, the two of them given fitness tests, and. John Gregg really wasn't fit. He got out of his bed that morning and couldn't walk. I mean, his ankle was so sore and stiff. Uh, I think he, he had to be given a, an injection, really, to play in the game, to take away the pain. And uh, he certainly wasn't, wasn't near 100% fit. But that was a bonus for all the lads, that he should play in the game. He was going to start the game anyway. 
Colin Jackson was a wee bit unlucky. Uh, he'd, he'd been injured a few weeks before, and he thought he would have made it to the final. He had a fitness test and broke down in the morning, so he was obviously gutted. For me, that was the reason I played. Uh, had Colin Jackson been fit, I think he would have played at centre-half alongside Dave Smith, and I would have been on the bench. So it was fortunate for me, but obviously a uh, disappointment for Colin Jackson. We'll get into a three-goal lead, three smashing goals. Uh, Dave Smith, I think, involved in most of them. He was absolutely outstanding that night. I know Willie Johnson scored two and Steenie got one, but Dave Smith at the back was absolutely immense. Of course, it, it's 3 nothing. We thought, we thought we'd won it. Uh, and, of course, they came back. They got a goal about 15, 20 minutes to go. And then we got a bit slack at the back. Well, I think we were tiring very, very badly indeed. Uh, we got a second goal, so I think the last few minutes we were on our knees really defending it. Uh, but of course, uh, the final whistle was immense. I can always remember uh, as soon as the referee blew his whistle, the thousands came on the pitch. And the first person at me was my older brother. And the first thing I did was I took it off the top and gave it to him. I made sure he got it stuck up in his jumper, so at least we've got a shirt. Uh, I think going off, all I had left was uh, the tie-ups on my socks. Everything else had been ripped off me. Uh, it was one of the chipping deals then, I think. But it was great, uh, great night that was, and it was history. That was the first thing that everybody was saying. You know, it's a f of all the great Rangers sides that have been in the past, this is the only one that's won a European trophy, and even to this day, you know, we're the only Rangers side that's won a trophy. And it was smashing. Going into the, the dressing room, everybody was jumping about. The champagne was flowing. Uh, they, we all jumped into the big uh, bath that was there. But we still hadn't seen the cup. What we hadn't realised that uh, when the game had finished, that John Gregg and Willie Waddle had to go along to this little room, you know, 10 by 10 room. And uh, the, the chairman of UEFA had just given John Gregg a trophy. It was as if to say, here it is, now get out. And, and John came into the, the, the bath and threw it in the bath and we were throwing this little toy about. But uh, it was fabulous and it's something I, I'll certainly remember for the, the rest of my life. The unfortunate thing for us, and I felt as a player, that it's always nice to, when you win something, to be able to go around the park and show the supporters and enjoy it after it. And that was denied us. Uh, I think when you play with Rangers and Celtic, uh, one of the things you miss is that if anybody w else wins it, they can go, like say, if Aberdeen, the town comes up and they go on an open date bus, if it's the same with uh, any other town, Harps and Hibs do the same. If you play for Rangers and Celtic, basically you're not allowed to do that. Uh, the only thing you've really got is, in the olden days, you, you got a chance to go around the park with it. Uh, and for us to win, probably our greatest honour and because of the trouble and with the police and the, uh, the supporters we were denied uh, getting presented and going around the stadium and that and it's always something I regret. But John Gregg, Sandy Jardin, Derek Johnson and the rest did get their lap of honour. Tens of thousands filled Ibrooks the following day to welcome back their heroes amid emotional scenes. This had been a trophy won against quality opposition. moved upstairs as general manager and handed the full running of the team to a man who had already been making a huge contribution as first team coach and who had the total respect of the players. Jock Wallace uh, was a fitness fanatic, there's no doubt about that. I think if you look back, we won uh, an awful lot of games in the last 10 minutes simply because we were fit. I mean, I'm told, uh, and again, tell me if I'm, if I'm wrong, but the likes of the, the 70 final that uh, he was hosing players with cold water and rubbing whiskey into their scalps. You yeah. Know, all uh, kinds of stories oh, going yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, Joke had a lot of funny ideas like that. And when I, I always hate cold water. You know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of that. So uh, what all the players had to do is, it, and everybody had to do it, we're all treated the same, we all did the same. And uh, before the games, he would get, you had to go into the shower room and they had this power hose and they would blast you with this freezing cold water. And everybody had to go through it. And, oh, I hated that. <laughs> that was the worst part of the game. Uh, and then after that, he came through and uh, we had an old chap who was a... That was when we first started to get a sprint coach, Tom Patterson. And he had used to take some of the, the sprinters from uh, Meadow Bank in these days for the Powder Hall sprint and training up. So he started to take us for sprint training. And some of the wee things he used to do is uh, he'd make up a solution with whiskey and uh, spirit and rub it on your head, and it did make your head tingle. I don't know if it made you play any better, but it seemed to work, so we carried on with it. Character building. Uh, but, yeah, that was the first start of the character what, what, building. What about the training? 
uh, and, and the Wallace uh, running up and down the sand dunes. Uh, a lot was made of that. A lot was made of it. Uh, a lot was made of it. The, the thing is that that was the only thing we did. We didn't. We did get a five aside sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I think the thing is that if you look at my team and the Rangers team that played there, I think about eight or nine years played well into their thirties. In fact, I played till I was thirty-nine. And one of the reasons w uh, I played was that uh, the training that I did. It was like you put it in the bank. I mean, initially I think we trained it too hard, and I think Jock recognised that. Uh, I mean, he used to murder us uh, around the track uh, and up and down the sand dunes. And a lot of people made a wee bit of uh, silly comments about it. But one thing is that we were exceptionally fit as a team. And then in the later life, when you get into your 30s, I think that's one of the reasons why we all played so long, because we had trained so hard and looked after ourselves so well that it was like having it in the bank. And uh, the team I played in, uh, in Jock's uh, team, basically all the players played, you know, had a very good lifespan. Uh, in the football, and part of it was down to Jock's training. But uh, initially when we came, we had never seen anything like it. I always remember the first day they ever took us, we, we had a thing, what they called 40 minutes, and it was just 40 minutes non-stop running, and it was like lifts, uh, lift 100 yards, lift 200 yards, lift 440, and your rest period was a jog. And uh, we started with 46 players, and at the end of the training session, there was only five of us. They, they just fell out or dropped back and we used to get that every every Tuesday so everybody made sure the early night on the Monday <laughs> this is a match between Rangers and Celtic how the players go out there and perform tomorrow you know when they go over that white line they're on their own they have to do what, you, what you've asked them to do you can't predict form you can't predict balance you can only predict that these lads are going out to give everything they've got Could have been interpreted as ungentlemanly conduct. It wasn't. McDonald. Slap back <laughs> Into the second half and reap. That's Quentin Young. Johnston did well to Douglas Dean. Kirk stopped it on the line. Rangers 2-1 ahead. Josh Conley could take this kick and he rarely misses. Conley makes it 2 all. McLean taking this kick. Score 2 all. Conley covers. Best ever, but a shadow of a doubt. It's the best old firm final I've played in. Smashing game. It was. Uh, it was a game that had an awful lot of skill in it as well. I mean, it was two evenly matched sides at that time, and as everyone says, and quite rightly so, when form goes out the window when these two teams play, it's it's one of the best. I think it was a centenary final. Uh, I always remember Celtic going in the lead. I'd, I'd played centre half that day, and, and Kenny Dalglish scored for them. I think he turned me not for the first time in the game, and had a great shot just under Peter McCloy. Uh, we got back into the game, uh, Alex McDonald, who, whom I thought was a very, very underrated player, I thought he was a smashing player for Rangers, did all the, the donkey work and scored his fair share of goals. He did well on the left, got to the byline, and uh, Derek Parling, uh, a tremendous header to make up one each. Uh, we felt at, at that time we were playing well, Celtic had probably the edge uh, up until we scored the goal, so it was always nice to, to get back on uh, level terms. And at half-time, we got a bit of a roasting from Jock, who said to us, hey, you're as good as them, just believe that you're as good as them, go out there and show them what you can do. And of course, the first couple of minutes of the second half, uh, just a ball from Quentin Young right through for Alfie Conn, who we outstripped Billy McNeil uh, to hit the ball in 2-1. And, and we felt good after that, we were, we were very, very confident, we were getting forward, there was a buoyancy about the team. And of course, came the best save that John Gregg's ever made in his life. 
Uh, tremendous play by Celtic. Wee Jimmy Johnson got by me again. That was twice in the game. Uh, squared, I think Dixie Deans had a great shot that beat Big Peter. And John Gregg dived along the goal line to keep the ball out. Uh, and I think nowadays he's obviously going to be off the park for that. But it was a fabulous save. And of course, George Connolly, the, the coolest man at hand, and stuck the ball in to make it 2 2. So I think after that, Celtic got a lift, no doubt about that. And uh, it was uh, ebbing and flowing the game until a few minutes to go when uh, we Tommy McLean was a free kick on the left hand side. He just chipped the ball into the box and we had everyone in there. We had a big side then anyway. And I, I managed to get my head onto the ball again. It hit both posts. I thought it was going in. And then Tom Forsyth, I think uh, there's no doubt the best goal that he's ever scored in his life. And, uh, I think it was about three centimetres when we measured it after the game. It doesn't matter if it was a 30 yard or a three centimetre goal. Big Tom stuck it in. And I think the funniest thing in the world was trying to catch him after the game, uh, after he scored the goal. But that was a fabulous game. Uh, and I, th I think even the Celtic players after the game were saying it was a great game to play in. Obviously, they were disappointed with the result, as were the fans. But for me, that's probably the, the finest. In fact, it was the best old final game I've ever played in. That was really uh, our team, my generation, really starting to, to hit the front. Uh, a lot of players, about six or seven players, who were all at the same age, around about 23, 24, coming together. And that, that was us really starting to hit a, a cycle where we were the dominant team throughout the 70s. I always remember that final. It was a 3-2 cup final. It was a magnificent cup final. I mean, we played very well, but Celtic played well that day as well. And it had a lot of go 3-2, a lot of goals, a lot of goal month incidents, a lot of excitement. And it was played on a nice day, and I think 122,000 there. So uh, that was one of the better football and game cup finals I played in. We were lucky enough to win. And uh, the treble winning years, you must have... Yeah, uh, they, they were, they were they're sweet. I mean, uh, as everybody, I mean, Rangers just two years ago won the treble and nearly did it again. Uh, it is quite hard to do, uh, no matter how dominant you are, because in the cups and that, okay, the league, the best team will always win it because the uh, luck balances it out. But in cups, sometimes you're up against it. Sometimes somebody gets a wee bit of the green, and to do that was uh, that was a bit sweet. Another significant Old Firm victory came in January 1975, which pushed Rangers towards the last of the Old First Division titles and prevented Celtic winning ten in a row. McLean coming infield. Square to Parlane. Parlane gets it back. Out to McLean, still dangerous. McDonald, Johnston, Scott, all in the middle. McLean, right foot to the left foot. There's the chip cross. Johnston going in. That's there. Beautiful goal. Derek Johnston has scored in the fifth minute for Rangers. Rangers lead 1-0, a beautiful build-up and a beautiful climax. McDonald's superb pass out to McLean. McLean making tracks infield. Parlane looked as if he had lost it, got it through again to McLean. McLean right foot to his left foot, out in front. Derek Johnson at the far post, a fine header. It's part of Thistle on Wednesday. It's pitch walked into this match early in the second half. McDonald, McLean. Great chance for number two. It's there. It's number two. Rangers go two up. Four and a half minutes in the second half. A brilliantly simple goal. Alec McDonald hit an absolutely superb ball inside the Celtic defence. Tommy McLean ran on. And as Hunter came out, stuck the ball into the corner to give Rangers a two-goal lead. Good to go coming away for Rangers. Good running here by McDougall. Nice ball out to McLean. There's the cross. Parlane. It's a goal. 3 nothing. Parlane has made it 3 nothing. 28 minutes gone in the second half. And that's the close-up that gives you the news. So Rangers three up now. A brilliant move on the right. And it was young McDougall, Ian McDougall, who really did the build-up. He walked through on the right, shoved it out to McLean. McLean floated it across. There was a slight deflection on the way over, which I think partially deceived Ali Hunter. And Par Lane was at the far post to nod the ball into the net. To make it Rangers 3, Celtic 0. Rangers and their fans had waited since 1964 for championship success. 
Judgment Day came at Easter Road against Hibernian, where they needed a point. Early indications were that it wouldn't be easy. Early for Hibs. Harper. Picked up by Stanton. Shaver and Duncan on the left. Shaver sprinting downfield, and that's a nice cross. There's a great chance for Hibs. And the ball's in the net, and it's the goal. McLeod has scored for Hibs in the 19th minute. A beautifully taken goal. Richly deserved by Hibs, who played some sparkling football. Rangers, one goal down. Now Steen. Stopped by Shedler. Shedler back, has a chance. McKean, right field, brought down on a pin tick. Penalty to Rangers. Sensation in the 12th minute of the second half. Tragedy for Eric Shedler. An absolute tragedy for Eric Shedler. He thought the way to the goalkeeper was clear. He turned the ball back. Bobby McKean was on to it. Got round MacArthur, who had no choice but to pull him down. And it's a penalty kick. And what a moment for Sandy Jordan. Rangers captain to take the kick. There's Jim MacArthur. Here's Jordan. This is McKean. McKean coming through. Brought down from behind. Ball given there against Ian Munro. Free kick to Rangers. McLean chipping it forward, headed down by Stanton. Rangers trying to keep the pressure on. McLean out to Jordan. Cool play by Jordan. A good pass forward to McKean. McKean going on the outside, getting it across. Chance for Steen and a goal! 16 and a half minutes played and Easter Road erupts. Free kick to Hibbs. Smith lopping it forward. Jackson heading down. And it's all over. And Rangers have done it. There's Jock Wallace. And there's Sandy Jardin. And that's the picture that says it all. Sandy Jardin had volunteered to leave the field so skipper John Gregg, fighting against injury, could play in the closing stages. Six times have been second. Twice they've been third. There's John Gregg with Jock Wallace. Gregg with Jardin. Around all his players. Hibbs offering the congratulations. A fine, fine match. The Ibrox fans, as you can see, absolutely delirious. Hibbs offering the congratulations there. Jock Wallace with his players. Great delight. Easter Road belongs to the fans. The leaping about cheering and singing and I wouldn't be surprised if Rangers came over towards the fans they certainly seem to want to do it yes there they go Rangers coming across to huge support in front of us John Gregg being lifted. John Gregg being lifted on the shoulders of his teammates. Wallace there with Gregg. One or two fans filtering onto the field. John Gregg going down, flooding the fans. Behind that goal, we saw Rangers survive a missed penalty and grab the equaliser, which has brought them the league championship. There's the 
Scottish League Cup. And there's the roar from the Rangers fans. No sign of the rest of the Rangers team. Sandy Jardin finally appearing behind them. Fans. Quinton Young, Donald, the man who scored the goal midway through the second half. And we Donny was uh, he never got the credit he was due. He was, you know, it was one of these favourite terms at the time, he was a player's player. Uh, and people didn't appreciate the sort of job he did. But uh, if you look back in a lot of the films, all the big cup finals and semi finals. We thought he's always the one that gets goals. He always great, great timing at riding in the box. Claim to Jordan. Holt trying to challenge out to Denny. There's plenty of time to float one across, which he does. Who's good for Johnston? And the chance of Barney to the goal. Rangers lead 1 0 in the 29th minute of the match, and a simple goal it was at the end of the day. moment in this match, the all-important first goal going to Rangers, Derek Parley in the scorer. Shot one from Denny. Playing through towards Jardin, a dummy and a chance for McKean. Back to Jardin, McLean lying wide, waiting for just such a pass. Good cross, Johnson heading in, and it's there. 2 nothing for Rangers. 14 minutes gone in the second half. A fine goal, well worked. Derek Johnston, the scorer. So a throw to United, a few yards from the corner flag. Taken by Houston. Fell back out. Houston is on side. United really could use a goal at this stage in the game. Payne going up and a great chance for Stalock, and it must be a goal, and it is. Paul Sturrock, the substitute, has scored in the 18th minute of the second half. A nicely worked and a nicely taken goal, coming at just the right time for United. McLean with a free kick from Miller behind him. Straight through out in front of Jackson, that's the goal. Colin Jackson ties it all up. Six minutes to play. Rangers 3, Dundee United 1, and I would say that would be just about that. And it's a throw. McLean to Greg. Marlene heading down, McDonald nipping in. And McDonald scores. 4-1. Three minutes to play. Marlene is injured, but McDonald is the scorer. Payne will probably want to take this himself. Colin Jackson, as you see, moving down with his sh shadow, Willie McVeigh, two of the biggest men on the park. McLean floating it in, looking for Jackson. McVeigh away for a corner. Henderson a touch, great chance for the goal. Derek Johnston's 11th goal of the season. Rangers lead 1-0, five minutes played. Greg floating it in. Davidson, good ball. Maranello's a lot of room to move here. Perigue on the right, Graham on the left. Referee giving them the advantage. Davidson, a lovely ball to Pettigrew. And a deflection, and it's an own goal. Side for McLean. Neat play by McLean. McDonald off through the centre. Hamilton to McKean. Out in front of the chance, and it's hit the post, and it's in off the post by Johnston. Two. 
This is Alec Miller. Play by McKean. Drifting out from the centre as well, but Forsyth coming across with him. Followed by Javier and Forsyth. Now a chance for Johnston. Henderson going forward, McLean behind him. McLean of Water, McDonald, 2-0. 30 seconds of the second half. Alec McDonald makes it, Rangers 2, Aberdeen 0. Greg with a free kick, Johnston well up, straight to Gigan. He drives it straight at Johnston. Then to here. Graham with his shadow on it, Miller beside him. Good ball. Smith has a free shot here if he wants it. Oh, what a goal! What a goal! Jackson putting it forward. Miller at full stretch, doesn't get it away. McLean lofting it forward. Henderson, it must be. Greg, good ball, keen in good position. Out in front to Henderson, dummy to Parlane. Oh, what a move, what a move, what a chance. Henderson, Parlane has scored. It's 4 1, three minutes to play. The League Cup and Premier Championship had been won. Now Rangers could clinch the treble by beating Hearts in the Scottish Cup final at Hamden. Hearts have won the toss, so Rangers kick off in the 1976 Scottish Cup final, the first meeting in the final between the two sides since 1903. There's the first free kick of the match to Rangers midway inside the Hearts half. Time. 
Jackson moving down. Keep putting it in. Now McDonald. saw that, read it well, Mark's throw, Aidan Prentice, now Aidan wriggling his way through, tried a 1-2, didn't block, Greg intercepting, McKean going left, Henderson coming across to the right, Johnston in the centre, McKean is there, Greg in support, short ball to McKean, nice play by McKean, there's the cross, there's the ball, shot is on, there's a chance for a goal and it's there tremendous run by Kenny Ayr, setting up the chance for Graham Shaw his 14th goal of the season and a consolation perhaps for Hearts Mr Davis is looking at both his watches and it's all over all over John Wallace is out of the tunnel there he is, with his Johnny Hamilton Derek Parlane is there very good cup final indeed. A superb performance by Rangers and a brave, brave effort by Hearts. But the cup final, alas, is all about winners too. And in a minute you'll hear the roar. There it is. As Mrs. Allen, the wife of the SFA secretary, Mr. Willie Allen, hands over the cup to John Gray. And that's what the fans think about it. forgot his medal behind him Peter McCloy so safe but no chance with the goal that beat him Colin Jackson and a magnificent game a play match for him and a really tremendous season Martin Henderson his first Scottish Cup medal something I remember all his life Tom Forsyth played so well Colin McLean Derek Johnson his two goals the 76 side was it was a smashing team, uh, and I think we'll, we'll win the League Cup earlier uh, in the season with the feel of what we're going to do well because we're a great blend in the side all the way through the middle of the team it was solid, and I think if you're going to have a good side then the backbone of the side has to be good. by Gordon Smith and now of course the clearance by Peter Latchford it's Russell again Gordon Smith Gordon Smith scores his 20th goal for Rangers now how will Celtic react to this trying to head over there, appealed that he had been fouled. The referee waving play on. For a moment, he gave the Celtic fans some hope that he appeared to run to the spot, but waved play on. McDonald. McLean. Russell must score. Dragon Cup finishes it off. Celtic caught out there completely. They were busily protesting. The referee ran to the penalty spot, allowed the play to run on. 
Grabbed the rope in a tackle, but Wilson slips away with the ball. He lifts it into the middle. Kennedy punches it. Drive by Aiken. Appeals there that the ball has been handled. Lavin taking it. Craig with his chest. And driven in by Ed Balsam. Jordan. That's touched in by Paul Lane. Here comes McKean. Right winger playing on the left at the moment. Gordon Smith. Go back Young who tumbled down. Stark rather who went down. Gordon Smith. Johnston got a touch there. Rangers go one up, scored by Johnson, made by Smith. Then it is again, see the way Smith controls the ball, takes on his man, pulls away from him, cuts it across, and Johnson just sticks out a foot and gets a touch to it. Jackson has come into the penalty box, not in your picture, but he'll run in from the left-hand side. Headed by Smith. Gordon Smith scores. Colin Jackson was up there, but not needed. Cooper took the, Cooper took the kick. Gordon Smith finished it off, 28 minutes. So there it is again. Here's the kick taken by Cooper, and a header by Gordon Smith, beating Hunter at his left-hand post. Colin Jackson moving down. The train available for a short one. There it goes. Headed in by Johnston, and it's a goal. Gallagher and Peel to Rankin. Brown coming up on his side. Clark's there as well. A lot of white shots are forward in the closing moments of the first half. This is Brown, tries one in, and it's a goal! Shot into McLean. Interception by Rankin. Now, what a chance for Rankin. Has he got the legs? Has he got the stamina? Has he got the coolness? McLean comes back out, and Rankin comes through, turns it in, and that is a sensation! Can Fawford hold out? This is McLean. Again, it's not done, and it's a goal. 2-2. Two, two. No, McLean. Oh, beautiful ball. McDonald. Oh, and a lovely goal. Now, that was a beautiful goal for Ali McDonald. Derek Parlane looking for another chance. McLean takes it. And McLean, Parlane is there. McLean coming through. Good run by McLean. Tremendous run by McLean and a goal by Johnston. Oh, Tommy McLean, brilliant. Fawford on the point of exhaustion. Played on the right. Robin tries a long one. Spotted late by Kennedy, still dangerous. Taken out in front, advancing, moving in. Tremendous recovery there by Kennedy, saving the day for Rangers. And Smith quickly to the other end. Cooper and Mark. Back to Smith. Smith going on the outside, but running into trouble. Turns it out in front. Cooper scores. Cooper scores for Rangers. Six minutes from half time. Dave Cooper's seventh goal of the season. Made by Gordon Smith. Finished off by Dave Cooper's powerful left foot. to McLean. We kick to Rangers.
looking up into the sun for that one. This is Aiken. Dye. McCluskey. Sneddon is onside. That's a good move. Edvaldson. Goal. Out of nothing. Celtic score. Ed Paulson, his 10th goal of the season. Five minutes to go, and Celtic from nowhere have fought back and scored a tremendous equaliser. All happened down the right-hand side. Sneddon made ground on the right. But his crossover, Ed Paulson moved in with Jackson. Kennedy came off his line. The ball finished up in the back of the net. Three minutes remaining. Smith to Johnston. Miller coming up as the extra man. There's his cross. There's Latchford, the ball spinning loose. Headed in by Smith, and the referee's giving a goal. Gordon Smith scores. Three minutes from the end of extra time. His 23rd goal of the season. And for the second time of the match, Rangers go into the lead. Alec Miller came up on the overlap, picked up that ball wide, made space very quickly in field, putted it across, right footed, Latchford committed himself, punched it away, and Smith followed up, headed the ball into the net. Gordon Smith. Cooper. Coming infield, Derek Johnston. Russell. Johnston signaling for a return. Alec McDonald. Alec McDonald. 34 minutes, Rangers one up. Cooper. Cooper twisting away from Kennedy, but Kennedy stabbed in a foot there, got it to Sullivan. Sullivan going in with Russell. Rangers throw. Jordan. McLean with his left foot. And a great header by Johnston. Great goal by Johnston. 2 0 for Rangers. Sullivan. Miller. Scanlon. McMaster. Cut across. And Richie had a chance there. The ball dropped it. Richie has scored. Richie has scored but is it too late for Aberdeen five minutes from the end the climb that's it Rangers have won and John Gregg has his sixth winner's medal the remarkable man who has just capped 18 seasons at Ibrooks, playing in his 73rd Scottish Cup tie, and Jock Wallace, the Rangers manager, saying well done to all the players. There is the face of a very, very happy man. A second treble had been won in three seasons, and Jock Wallace was indeed a happy man. So too was John Gregg. What neither knew was that this would be Wallace's last game in charge of the treble-winning Rangers side. A fallout between Willie Waddell and Wallace led to the latter quitting and joining Leicester City a short time later. It also proved to be John Gregg's last game for Rangers because he was pitched straight from the dressing room into the Ibrox hot seat as Wallace's successor. Without doubt, Gregg was one of the truly great Rangers captains. He had won medals in the early part of his career, but then had to endure the difficult years when Jockstein reigned at Celtic. Gregg had often carried Rangers on his back during that period.
It was fitting, therefore, that he also enjoyed so much success in the latter seasons of a superb career. Well, that's why he, he did a, a stoop in his back, because he carried Rangers for years and years. And he was well respected by players. That's one thing. I mean, they used to say to us, he was the ball player in the team. But uh, he was the man that got... If you weren't playing well, you certainly get a kick up the backside for you, Greg. And that's what you need on the park. It doesn't have to be the captain that does that. I think you always need somebody there when, when people are looking low and, and they're feeling sorry for themselves. It needs somebody to come over and, and clout you in the ear or kick you in the backside. And Greggy was superb at that. Might not be playing well him, himself at the time, but he made sure that others uh, played well around him. And I think that's very, very important. Even nowadays, that's important for players. Danny Johnson out in front. He's there. Out to McLean, still dangerous. McDonald, Johnston, Scott, all in the middle. McLean, right foot to the left foot. There's the chip cross. Johnston going in. That's there. Beautiful goal. Derek Johnson has scored in the fifth minute for Rangers. McLean and Greg trying to plot something. McLean a quarter. to Johnston moving in. And it's a goal. A sensational start for Rangers. Nice play by McKean. There's the cross. There's the goal. Goal number three. Derek Johnson has scored it. But Bobby McKean's all the way. McLean with his left foot. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, my time there, especially with, with, with all the trophies that I'd won. You know, you see, the two trebles, no one can take that away from you. Uh, I played with some smashing players, you know, from the wingers that I spoke about, uh, the Willie, Willie Hendersons and Willie Johnsons, to the Tommy McLeans and the Davy Coopers of this world. I mean, without them, really, I certainly wouldn't have been the player I was. Because I said, I always needed ammunition to score goals, and when you've got players such as them supplying crosses for you, uh, you can't feel it. The two travels were magnificent. I mean, it's, it's something that Rangers hadn't done in the past. Uh, and Jock will always be remembered for that. I mean, there was too many people that said he was a fitness fanatic. He, he wasn't very good tactically. But at the end of the day, in 10 or 15 years' time, looking back at the records, it's two travels. And that's, that's what will go down in history. Who was 30.